Welcome to Serpente Sunday for Sunday, November 8th, 2020. Two weeks ago, I showed you a video of our rough scaled python, Morelia carnata, arriving and a little footage from his first month here, including him going into blue. And the very next night after I filmed that footage of him in shed and playing in his water dish, he did in fact shed and I was able to catch most of that on video as you see here. I also wanted to take this opportunity to go over how I have his enclosure set up. You see that I have a lot of real rocks and branches in here and that is paired with some fake synthetic foliage, leaves and vines and tree type things as well as some mag naturals um, rock caves that hang on the side of the enclosure. I have one up high here and one down low. I also have a ledge that is siliconed onto the side of his enclosure, which you will see in a few minutes, as well as a three quarter inch PVC perch that I've put in here. And the reason I've set his enclosure up like this with so much clutter, so many climbing things and rock things and cave-like things from top to bottom is because according to the Complete Carpet Python by Nick Mutton and Justin Julander, Morelia carinata, and this is directly from the book, is often associated with patches of monsoon forests lining the bottoms of canyons and gorges throughout the range in Australia. And it says that Morelia carinata is often encountered in trees and shrubs, and that they've also been found sheltering in rock crevices, and that the rough scaled pythons are also found in mangrove swamps at the mouths of watercourses. The book also goes on to say that Morelia carinata or the rough scaled python have the nickname rock chondros and that is because they are often found among rocks where they spend a lot of their time. I've tried to mimic that environment in his enclosure here by giving him rock ledges to rest on and rock caves to rest inside. I've also made sure that he has water and that's located at the bottom of his enclosure. You saw him swimming in it in the last episode and that he's got things to perch on and drape over. So he's just got a lot of things from top to bottom that he can not only rest on, but rest in. And they are real rocks or real branches or they mimic those things. Now here he is having a meal after his shed. He was quite hungry after he shed and he was certainly ready, willing and able to eat pretty much right away after he was done shedding. And the rodent looked so small when I was offering it to him. It's a fuzzy mouse. But then when he starts eating it, it looks like this huge bulge going down his throat and that ends up in his stomach. And so I think right now that the fuzzy mice that he's eating are about the appropriate size for him. You can also see how much more vibrant his colors are since shedding. If you compare what he looks like in this video post shed to how he looked at at the end of that last video when he was in deep blue, you can really see the richness of these browns and tans. And he's just so beautiful. I just absolutely love his color. Sangral's enclosure is heated during the day by a basking lamp and he also has a UVB bulb and that's what you see here. But he also has a source of infrared sea heat inside this cave. I've got on the wall of his enclosure a heat mat and that stays on at night and during the day. So 24 seven, he has a heat mat available on the side of this cave. And this is where I often find him resting for part of the day. He does come out and bask on his ledge under his lights for part of the day. 
and then he usually retreats inside this cave. Sangral is most active at night and he uses every inch of this enclosure from top to bottom and he utilizes all of the different items that are provided in here for him. When he does come to rest at night, he's usually on this ledge right here and he does have access to heat at night from a ceramic heat emitter as well as the option to retreat inside that cave where his heat mat is always left on.